matter how many or few eggs I get, which there's a chance that I get none, which would be crazy, but anything can happen. God, my boots are sore. Oh my word, they just feel heavy, like I have to lift them. Good morning. It is Wednesday. I don't even know what date. I sound like a man because I haven't talked yet. But I just parked because I am, hopefully I've said this like every single time, hopefully on my way to my last ultrasound, my last blood work, and I have my last Lupron, I'm hoping. And if it's not, whatever, I'll throw another one in. So I prepped it here, pulled it up, threw it with my little ice pack in my kit. Um, I have an alcohol swab, so I'm gonna give myself my Lupron and then go in for, like I said, hopefully the final the final one and then I move to trigger shots last one come on Lupron I have grown to love you and also hate you so the injections have gotten so much easier like I'm not in my head I'm like one two three BAM my camera died so we're on the phone today last ultrasound Second to the last time, stripping down naked. Need to shave my legs. Okay, I am hoping for juicy babies. Come on, children. Juicy, juicy. We want them nice and plump and clustered like just a explosion of babies. Like seven was already low and now like literally they look the same as they did two days ago. Like what if I go through this whole thing and I literally only get one egg of seven? Like, like the medications I'm giving are so strong. Like why aren't they growing? This was like my hope for a baby. I'm also a realist. I see the picture. You saw the picture. <laughs> this sucks. Like what we wait like more days. <sighs> this is why you go and you do this when you're 27 or something. God, my face is so big. <laughs> Oh my god, I don't even know my results. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. He's gonna call me and be like, everything looks awesome. You have seven ready follicles. He's not gonna do that because I know, I know there's one in my right ovary and there's like two in my left that are ready. The others are not growing. Why are they growing? What am I doing wrong? I drank a good amount of caffeine. I probably went over the 200 milligram limit. And I've been positive, like he said. I've been positive. I've been saying, like, talking to my babies. <laughs> Just so dumb. I did this as insurance, and it's not insurance. Like, your body has to do this. And this is why you save your money when you're 18 years old. If you really want kids, life is not guaranteed. And like, if I can't have babies, even with egg retrieval, like, does this happen to people? Did this happen to any of you? Please tell me. But I really like, I only care about one. I just want one. 
Maybe I'll just get pregnant. And be impulsive with my life choices. That would be really life changing and really dumb for where I'm at in life right now. I cannot have a baby. Like, even the fact that I'm here, I'm like, I could have married a lot of the people that I've dated. And I haven't. Because I would have regretted that. Sorry if any of you are watching this. <laughs> I still feel the pressure. Like, I feel the pressure to get pregnant. I'm like, oh my god, I have to meet a man. I keep getting phone calls. <sighs> I don't want that pressure. I don't, I'm not ready for a baby. I mean, I would be ready for a baby. I'd be fine, but... Like, my life and my, like, career and my finances, like, I got some work to do before I can have a baby. This is for sure the first tears that have fallen, and I don't even have bad news. I'm just anticipating the bad news, because I'd rather not be surprised and be, like, ignorantly positive. Ugh. Like, I can't even open my eyes. Like, my cheeks are just, like, humongous. I am a hot mess. Oh, my God. This is awful. If I can tell you one thing right now, whatever age you are, if you ever want potential kids, please go get your AMH done at least and know where you're at in the process. Like, I'm going to have to take out a loan and do it again. I'm going to have to do it again. <laughs> With no guarantee. And when am I going to do that? I am so on call for everyone else for the next, like, three months. And this is, like, a lot. Like, if someone's in labor, I miss it. Maybe I should have waited a month or something and like, oh, I'm saying cry. <laughs> just, oh, totally the hormones. It's so unfair. I'm normally way more mentally strong than this. <sighs> I need to go to Target and get myself a shower rod. <laughs> my shower rod is broken. I've been literally washing my hair in the sink. Wait for his call. To tell me that I have two follicles. This is so disappointing. So disappointing. Talk to me. Hi, so <laughs> you are all set for trigger tonight for a Friday retrieval. Okay. I'm only giving myself one trigger shot. Correct, but a total of 10,000 units. Yes. Okay. All right. I have that all written okay. down. Okay. Awesome. So I can go ahead and send you instructions through the portal just in case if you... Sure. Um, yeah, so if it's easier for you, take a pregnancy test tomorrow, like around noon or 1 o'clock. Okay. And then just call us and let us know the, re the results, and it, it should be positive. Okay. So I just have trigger shot tonight at 9.15. I'll take a pregnancy test around 12 or 1 tomorrow, and then 9.15 a.m. on Friday, I come in for the retrieval, and somebody will call me with, with instructions on that. The art team will be reaching out to you probably tomorrow, um, no, like in, by the end of tomorrow, to giving you all instructions of what to do and what not to do prior to your retrieval. Okay. Do I want to know what they saw with my follicles? My heart is beating so fast. I'm so nervous and so emotional. It's the hormones. <laughs> they said that I could just take I could just take a pregnancy test at home. So the estrogen, the estrogen, estrogen levels are really important too. The estrogen, the hormone levels are as important as the ultrasound are. Okay. So okay, one thing about fertility is that like I wouldn't use the word normal. Well, in comparison say, like, to the rest of the there, world. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't compare and contrast. It's like you can't compare and contrast relationships. You can't compare and contrast fertility. The only thing you can compare it to is just yourself. 
I mean, for myself, I wanted like 15. We were going for 15. I know. Uh, I know, but then we have to say, like, okay, what did we start off with? With what we, our baseline was that we started off with, was it good? I'm sorry, honestly, you can always, I know you're not going to want to be, so let's do it again. And I'll tell you one thing also, is that the times that you do it after, it's a little bit easier to do. Because yeah. you kind of know what to expect. Mm-hmm. You know how to feel. Do you know what I mean? It's slightly different. And then you can also have, like, a little bit more of an awareness going into the process. Yeah. I mean, it would, it honestly, it's like, it, I wouldn't say it's hard. Like, uh, no, for me, I'm saying, I don't think it's, I don't, I don't feel like it was that hard. <laughs> like it was more like coordinating my life and then how huge I've gotten. Like that's annoying, but I mean, I don't feel nauseous. My skin's gotten worse. And my face is for sure puffy. Like, I look in the mirror and I'm like, I can barely see my eyes. And I know, like, other people are like, no, it's not. But I'm like, no, 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 it is. Like, my, like when I smile, I feel it in my skin. <laughs> it's like I have preeclampsia. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. It's the I worst. Exactly what you mean. I had to change my rings today. Like, my yeah. rings don't fit. I'm telling you I'm swollen everywhere. Like, people that are like, so swollen. yeah, that I feel so swollen, swollen everywhere. But minus that, honestly, it's like I could definitely do it again. And the one thing I will honestly tell you, Sarah, is that nobody can make decisions for you but you. And any decision that you make is the right decision. Hold on. Well, I'm just going to pray for a miracle and be grateful for what I have. Thank you. We'll be in touch. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Okay. All righty. Bye. Bye. She's so great. This is why, like, a fertility doula is a thing. I have such a hard time asking for help. I hate being a nuisance. And I'm kind of like, I can, I can do it. I'll be fine. I'll figure it out. And I always do. It's how it's been. I've always been independent. I've always kind of had to figure things out. And it's been hard for me to depend on anyone else. So I appreciate her phone call checking in and telling me what's up and encouraging me. And reminding me to be grateful for whatever happens on Friday. Now I'm going to cry again. These hormones. What the heck? Like I'm about to be three or four is what I think is going to happen. It's just my sense. That's what I realized. I thought this morning. But I am. Um, like I'm three or four more eggs. Like with that as an option than I was. So that's positive, right? It's better than nothing. So I'm gonna choose to be grateful. I don't know why I'm crying. I'm just crying because I'm crying. I don't know why. I'm gonna be choose to be grateful for however many that I get. And not make any rash decisions about doing it again. But fingers crossed I get three. Oh my God, if I don't get three, I am just gonna cry my little eyes out. God, those of you women that do this over and over and over again, and then IVF, which is probably what I'm looking at if I'm gonna use them, probably meaning it, that is what I'm looking at if I'm gonna use them. This is insane. Like, no one talks about it. I'm sure they do. But like, this is the first step in any woman's fertility journey. And I just feel like we all need to take control of our bodies. It's trigger shot time. So guys, the time has come. This is my last one. I do have the ring light out. See that? Cause you gotta see me. Um, Novarel, which is just HCG. That's actually what, what is detected in your pee when you have a positive pregnancy test. So I'm going to give myself 10,000 units of Novarel, um, in one ML. So it's sub Q. It could be IM sub Q is just into like my fat versus into my, um, muscle. Thank God I'm not happy having to give myself an IM or a muscular in, like injection. Look at this needle. This is what I would have to do. Uh, no, no. 
No, no, no. We love that needle for drawing things up, but we are gonna use the tiny one again. So the idea with the trigger shot, my understanding is you give it 36 hours before your scheduled retrieval time. So I'm giving it at 9.15, which I have like three minutes to go. And, um, and so what it does is, is it triggers ovulation at the right time. So in theory, then my hormone levels, as long as my lining looks good and my follicles are ready and my hormone levels are right, that then you give the trigger shot and that allows for the eggs to be perfectly timed. I may have that sort of wrong. I am. I will ask Dr. Gadir tomorrow because I'm gonna talk to him about the whole thing. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna figure this out. So basically for the Novorel, I have, it says a bacteriostatic water, so it's just water. Um, this is the, the like liquid piece. I am going to draw up one milliliter of this guy. All the, juices. all the juices. Okay, so I have one ml here. Same thing as my Menopore, and then I'm mixing it with, I have two vials of, this is the actual medication. So I have the two vials of the Novorel. Each one has 5,000 units in it. And so I'm gonna put them together and equal 10,000. So I'm going to just put this fluid into the water. I'm gonna mix it around, mixy, mixy, mixy. Oh God, what I loved about the other one. Fine, I'll be a nurse. I just wanna get it all, all the juices, all the units, every last drop, we got it all. But that's the thing, you really have to be meticulous about getting it all and that's why you measure it out in the beginning and then you can also look in here to see how much is left in the bottom of this thing, which is like nothing, right? Like there's barely anything. So I feel good about that. And then I'm gonna make sure my number, yep, I'm right at one still, which means I got all of it out. Second one, squeeze all the rest of it in. Give a little shake, shake, shake. Come on, babies, shaking it up. You are gonna help me, okay? We're gonna be so ready. The other thing is in this rubber stopper, I don't know if you can see that. See how there's that gap in the rubber stopper right there that's like darker colored? I can actually see my needle and you do want to see your needle. Now I could use a Q-cap, which would probably make this a lot easier, but I need it all. See, you see that? There's more in there. Man, this is like very hard to get out. Come on. Yeah, that's just sucked real dry. Okay. See, I'm missing some. You know what we're gonna do? Oh, get real inventive here. No, <laughs> I'm like running out of time. Oh, oh. I think I got it. God, that is, that takes some work. That's more like it. I think I probably missed some, but no, I see it. Okay, give up on it, Sarah, give up. You did your best, okay. All right, so thankfully, I'm gonna switch out my needle head thing here. So what I actually give myself is with a smaller needle. All right, so here's the magic juice. Going for some good vibes. God, here's the thing. I've been kind of an emotional wreck all day and I just have to remember that God is in control. I do believe that. I do believe that he's given us modern medicine and given me access to amazing fertility doctors and clinics and storage facilities and nurses and people to help with this stuff and medications and all of this. So I do, I mean, I feel very at peace about doing this, but I also have to remember that no matter what the outcome, no matter how many or few eggs I get, which there's a chance that I get none, which would be crazy, but anything can happen. God, my boots are sore. Oh my word, they just feel heavy. Like I have to lift them. Anyway, um, amidst the God talk, the boob talk, 
but I just have to remember that he's in control and that um, I do believe that every human that's born and is here, including your life and my own, that we are here for a purpose and that that is very much because God wants us here. So I have to also understand that whatever egg, whether it be this one that I'm harvesting on Friday, it's Wednesday night right now, or if it's you know, an egg that gets ovulated into the future at some point, like that that is exactly who he wants here and that he has a plan and a purpose for their life. And so it sort of makes me emotional to think that like these eggs in there could be a part of that future that I'm housing right now. And eventually like I could carry them and they'd be back in me, which is so weird. Um, but I'm going to choose to be grateful no matter what the outcome, if I'm honest and I'm, here's the emotion, here's the emotion again. But if I'm honest, of course, like, did I hope for a harvest of 15 eggs? Yes. And is that likely? No, but we'll see. I'm not calling the shots. I'm really trying not to get ahead of myself. It's very like me for, to like anticipate what's going to happen versus not. All right, let's go right smack dab in the middle. Look at this gut. We have a gut all of a sudden like a full on belly, like I'm pregnant. I just feel huge. So I'm ready to be done with that. Here we go. Chose my spot. It's like no problem grabbing it now. Okay. You do your work. I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna have a positive pregnancy test tomorrow thanks to this one, so. Ready, set, go. Why does that hurt so much? Wow, I'm having to push hard. Oh boy. It's going, but so slow. Okay, I'm gonna see if you can see this. Oh my God. I am pushing so hard. Holy crap. All right, we did it. Guys, I made it through a million injections. In fact, I'm gonna do an Instagram post because I saved all of my syringes and I'm gonna count them up for the number of injections that I did in the last two and a half weeks. It's been two and a half weeks of injections that I have been doing this. Um, and we made it. Trigger shot is done. Time actually feels like it flew, but I was also super busy and working like crazy. There's a small piece of me that's like, it's my fault that I don't have more eggs because I never stop and I I think there's like probably an underlying amount of stress that I just live with that I'm like completely unaware of I'm like no I'm fine but like stressed <laughs> just a lot to do um, and I'm grateful for my job and I love my job I just I work really hard and I literally never stop so in fact I'm gonna go edit <laughs> now um, and write for this workbook and answer some emails. Um, but we made it. And here we are at the very end of my medication journey. We're doing the thing. So we're doing it. And it's all going to be worth it. It already is. It just especially will be worth it. I have to remember the end game of the fact that like, this is really what I want. More than bundle birth, no offense bundle birthers, but like, this is really what I want ultimately is a child and whatever it takes. Oh my God, there's more. Should I poke again? No! There's just drips in it. Why are there drips in it? I'm not gonna poke myself again, but feeling gypped like there's drops in the end of that come on
whatever it takes. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm being dramatic. Okay, so my trigger shot, can you see this? Look how raised it is. There's a bubble. Like it's, like there's a bump. I hope that's okay. Uh, it's tender, but not that tender. Do you see that? Look at all. I just got home from a baby care class and I luckily happened to have these modern fertility pregnancy tests. So instead of going into the lab to get my labs drawn to make sure that the HCG or the Nova, whatever, my trigger shot worked for me, she said that I could take a pregnancy test, which honestly, if you're doing this, ask about this as an option because to be able like to drive all the way to Beverly Hills to get a blood test just when I could do it at home is so nice. So I didn't know that I was gonna end up using these. Thankfully, Modern Fertility has really like come to the rescue throughout um, this journey. And so I'm gonna take a pregnancy test and hopefully it will be positive. They're so cute and little. Comes with two. Oh, nice. They're so cute. Pee on the absorbent tip or pee in a clean cup. Put the cap back on and five minutes. Here we go. Oh, guys, it's my first positive pregnancy test of my life. Hopefully this is um, for the future. Yep, that's it. Two lines equals pregnant. <laughs> We're not pregnant yet. We're just trying to get pregnant in the future. I'm gonna call them and let them know that that is good medications worked and it's like a very strong line. Like, look at that. Hello. Look how strong that is. Yes. Let me make that phone call and then I'll uh, talk to Dr. Gadir later today to figure out what the plan is for tomorrow for my egg retrieval. Hi, how hey, are you? I'm good. Um, so I took the pregnancy test and it is positive. Awesome. So, all right. We so should I be will set. Put that in your chart, and we're all set to go. Great. By today, they're going to email you full instructions of what to do and what not to do prior okay. to your retrieval and what time you're supposed to be here. Okay, got it. I okay. see it now. Yeah. yeah. You're supposed to be here like eight fifteen. Perfect. All right, we're set. So I actually. So I actually did get an email and this is from ART nurses. So this is a, like the surgery center at Dr. Gadir's office. So I'll read it to you. Uh, they said arrive at 8 a.m. So my thing's at 9.15. Um, I will be required to first check in on the first floor, get my temperature check, like the normal stuff. And then I have to be fasting. So I'm not eating or drinking anything before midnight or until after midnight, not even water. So I'm NPO. I can't drive for 24 hours. Uh, no one can really come with me. I'm discharged two hours post arrival. So, okay. I wear loose, comfortable clothes, bring a pair of warm socks. I need an ID, no scented lotion, and I need to fill out the questionnaire below. So that's it. So I'm gonna go in at 8 a.m. and be home hopefully by like probably 11? Maybe. Whoop, I'm hungry. Okay, so I'm gonna eat and then I will talk to Dr. Gadir at 2.45. All right, Dr. Gadir. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. So we're coming along. I think we are ready. Okay. Um, potentially to move forward. Um, you're having your retrieval tomorrow and I kind of wanted to go over some things so you know what to expect. Okay? Totally, I'd love that. Okay, great. So you basically um, went to almost day 15 of injections uh, because I really wanted to give a little extra time for your smaller follicles to grow. Uh -huh. You had follicles that grew at different rates. Mm -hmm. You have one that's really ahead, and then you have, it looks like, about three that are in the middle range, and then you have two that are a little bit behind. So I'm praying that in the last two days that they grew as well. Okay. So, um, my goal is to get every single one. I'm very meticulous in getting them. Okay. When you, and I do my best, sometimes if they're too immature, there is no follicle in them. And it's also happened sometimes that there just is no egg in a follicle. It just happens. Mm -hmm. But we'll be very meticulous to go after them all. Okay. When you arrive to the surgery center, the nursing team will start an IV on you. Mm -hmm. And in that minute, while you're laying down and 
Uh, we've said hello. My anesthesiologist will give a little bit of medicine and the IV just to relax you. And once you get into the procedure room, um, they're going to give you some medication that's going to actually let you fall asleep. And when you wake up, you're completely done. Okay. It's probably going to take under three minutes, this whole procedure of putting the vaginal ultrasound with a special needle at the tip uh -huh. in, which is going to help us resect the eggs. We're not cutting your body open. We are not sewing your body. It's a simple needle at the tip of the ultrasound that goes through the vaginal wall and your ovary is sitting right there into the follicles and then suctioning the follicular fluid and with it comes the egg. Okay. So when you're looking at my labs, you're looking at my estrogen levels, my LH, FSH, progesterone, right? Yes. How does that how does that relate to the follicle growth, follicle size? Like what, what, how do they, how do they compare? Like, how does that all work? Well, every mature follicle more or less on average, by the time it's getting ready or close to retrieval, um, is making about 300 units of estrogen. Okay. So if we look and we have one, two, three, four, five, ah. six, um, and they're getting close to 300, you know, where, and your estrogen level is at 2198. So that being said, they're all making adequate amounts of estrogen, um, and that's how we proceed with this. Oh, I'm so proud of them. Yes, and that's <laughs> a good sign, because sometimes if estrogen levels are really low, it means quality of eggs is really low. Okay. 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 So we feel good about my estrogen levels, particularly, and that just means that, like, the egg is in there, potentially, and it's, it's secreting its juices of estrogen. Okay. Okay. Correct. Perfect. Exactly. Okay. Cool. And then how does the trigger shot work? So I gave the trigger last night and that's for ovulation to like bring them to peak maturity or something. The trigger shot is going to be the trigger that allows them to go into the final phase of maturation Okay. before they're going to be retrieved. Got it. So typically if I were to like be pre ovulation, I give it 36 hours before because why? Because that's about how long it takes once you give it that an egg would release. So we're okay. going to get them right before that. Perfect. So they'll be like right ready to go and then you can just grab them. Okay. Correct. Exactly. Cool. Amazing. Well, I, I think that's all the questions I have. I feel ready. I'm very positive and I'm grateful for you guys. And let's do this. Well, I can't wait to see you. So if you need Yay. anything at all, please reach out. Okay? Perfect. And hopefully we're going to have a great outcome. And I'm very proud of you for doing the best that you can do. That means a lot to me. Okay. And I love how you're optimistic and you're happy and you're positive and good things could happen. Amen. It is. I'm going to keep it that way. I have my ups and downs. These hormones are, are real intense as far as your emotions go. I did have one meltdown yesterday in the car, but we, we reined it in and I'm, I'm feeling great. So I'm, I'm grateful for every single egg, no matter how many you get. And I am trusting in the process and in the future. So I am with you. Okay. Fantastic. fantastic. Awesome. Cool. It sounds like he's thinking I'm going to get three, but there's still hope based on my estrogen levels for more. So we're going to see. Moral of the story, don't try to answer your own questions or you'll drive yourself mad, which I did yesterday. And patience is a virtue. It's hard to wait for answers. It's hard to like not, not jump to conclusions, <laughs> myself included. But um, you know what? The only way to know is to know and pick up what you can control and let go of the rest. And you know, rather than hypothesizing all of the potential outcomes, I'm going to try to stay focused and practice my own medicine. I'm grateful. That's my word for today. This was not even intentional, but it's just, it's working out. Um, stay tuned because we doing the thing. It's on. There you go. Here's the good stuff, guys. Medazzle. I'm going to call it Medazzle Slam because in a moment you'll know why. Oh boy. Oh boy.